I did not even see you there. How are you? Good. I am so glad to hear that. Ah, I'm just messing with you. This is Strings with Mr. Keith. <laughs> so today um, we're going to be learning basics of the violin. So whether you think you know how to play or you're just curious at how to learn this video is just for you so we're going to start with the parts of the violin okay so this is a standard full-size violin and there's a lot of moving parts so um, we'll just go through it so this right here it looks like its name if you think about it this is called the scroll Everybody say that with me. The scroll. Good. And then these four little pegs. Okay. I bet you're, you're saying you're already jumping ahead. Slow down. That's not even what it's called. These are called the tuning pegs. Huh. Um, so these tune uh, your strings. Um, this right here is called the neck. Okay where you place your fingers on the other side is called the fingerboard innovative stuff here people I'm telling you okay and then continuing down you have the bridge okay I don't know why kids always laugh when I say this next one I don't get the joke but these are called F holes maybe somebody can help me out I don't get it Anyway, um, these are F holes. If you have access to a violin, this part, next part may be intriguing to you if you did, haven't already known. If not, um, I doubt you're going to be able to see inside. Yeah, not really. But if you look inside, kind of like right inside here, there's um, a piece of wood sticking up. Um, and that is called your sound post. And I always tell students that is the most important part of your instrument because you can replace strings, you can replace tuning pegs, um, you can replace what I'm going to tell you next is the tailpiece, but you can't replace <laughs> the sound post. And so um, with that, you have to be very careful in how you handle the instrument, how you store, uh, store the instrument. Um, and we'll get into that next. Um, then the, this, this right here is the tail piece. Right here, these four things, I will give you a virtual high five if you can tell me what these four things are. No advanced students, and go. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nice try. Fine tuners, okay? They're not the circly things, they're called fine tuners. Say it with me, fine tuners, okay? And the difference between fine tuners and tuning pegs is if I wanted to say my A, which sounds like this, was out, okay? And it sounded like this instead. Nothing. Ah! <laughs> Okay, I just hit myself in the eye with the tuning peg. Okay, so, so my A, you can see here, is out, right? Me cranking this, this fine tuner isn't going to do anything, okay? So that's what these tuning pegs are for, and you'll hear... And then I can hear that my A is a little flat, so to raise it, um, raise it up just a little bit, you know, maybe a half a step, that's where the fine tuners come in, okay? This right here, everyone knows what it's called, it's the chin rest. Yes, good job, give yourself a pat on the back. Alright, this here is called the tail, or I'm sorry, the cute little button. This is the button, okay? And then what I have on the back here is called a shoulder rest. 
Um, with it, I can keep my violin up like this. Um, I recommend investing in one. They're, um, they range in price, but to me they're a good investment, especially if you're just learning. Um, without it, I mean, it's, it, it's I'm, you know, this is what happens. You can't keep it. It's a little lazy without it. So, um, and it creates a lot more work for you. So, I, I would recommend buying a shoulder wrist. Because, boom. And then it helps with when you get into shifting and, you know, all that good stuff. So, um, that one doesn't matter. So, again, review the scroll, the tuning pegs, the neck, fingerboard, the bridge, the F holes. The most vital, the most vital part is inside the F holes called the sound post. Good job. The tailpiece, the fine tuners, the fine tuners, the chin rest, and the cute little button, and the shoulder rest. Okay, cool. So now we're gonna get into these beautiful things called the strings. Let me make sure I'm in tune. Okay. So, you can check my tuning with the piano, it's probably not right. Anyway, that's not the point. Um, so we usually start with, um, you'll, you'll see there's, it goes thickest to skinniest. Okay, so this is your thickest and this is your skinniest. Now, why when most people teach violin, they start on this one, the third one? I couldn't tell you, but they do. I'm not gonna do that, so I don't wanna confuse you. So we're gonna go from thickest to skinniest, okay? G, D, A, E. Your turn. G, good, D, A, E. Now, if you're really good at math, really good at math, you'll be able to tell that these are two and fifths. You're like, what? Mr. Case, what does that mean? I'll show you. So, G, so the musical alphabet has six letters in it. Oh, goodness, my math is off. It has seven. <laughs> um... A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Seven letters. And then after G, it goes all the way back to A. Okay? So, we don't go H. There's no I. There's no J. I wish there was a K. But there's not. It stops at G. That's just how it is. I don't make the rules, people. Okay. So... There's G, and everything goes up, because as you press, the um, pitch goes up. That's higher than, right? So, that's G, A, B, C, and then our next string is D, and that's, a f that's five, right? And then after D is E, correct? D. E, F, G, A. And then our next string is E. A, B, C, D, E. So our strings are tuned in fifths. Okay. Um, with that, I'm going to show you a little, uh, a little trick that a lot of you um, music folks that uh, know about theory or know how to, you know, music works, but just don't know how to play the violin. I'm about to give you a life hack that will change the rest of your life. And for that, I'm going to bring out my Mr. Electric. And actually, my Mr. or Mrs. Electric doesn't have a name. So why don't you comment below with some name suggestions. Look, all white, beautiful. Look at her. Just... Love it, okay? So, 
you'll notice on Mr. or Mrs. Electric that there are three tapes. And now you're thinking, what does that have to do with our strings being tuned in fifth? Well, I'm going to show you. Um, most beginners start out with four tapes. Excuse me? Four tapes. But you don't necessarily need them. I'm going to show you why. So starting on our, here's our thickest. Okay. You'll see this G. Okay. This just got out of tune, so don't listen to it. And then there's a tape where you would put your first finger. That's A, because our alphabet goes after G, it starts at A, right? So G, A, B, C. Okay? G is open string, so just plucking the string alone is just it's G, that's bass. You put a finger down on the red tape on G, that's A. You put your second finger on the next tape, that's B. Then the third is C. And what's crazy is what comes next is D, right? Now, I said there would be four tape there could be four tapes, but there's not. So you could either put a fourth finger down which, when you get become more advanced, is what I suggest doing. Using fourth finger to play D. Or you can just go to the next string, which is D. Right? So fourth finger is also the next open string. And so then we have D string. And then first finger would be what's after D? A, B, C, D, E. There we go. Catch up. Then we have S sharp. Then we have G. And then we could either put our fourth finger down and it'd be A, or we go to the next string. One finger down is B, two fingers down is C sharp, three fingers down is D. The next would be fourth finger or open, which is E. And then F, G sharp. F sharp, G sharp, A. Um, and that, that's life hat. So, each tape represents something. If you want to get tapes put on, um, I would suggest, um, if you know how to use a keyboard, I would suggest doing it that way. Try to find where it is with each, now that you know where. Um, if you want to look at this video and pause it right here, you can kind of just see where they go. Give you a second. Cool. Um, and then, so, that is our first class. Can you believe it's basically been 15 minutes already? Me either. Um, but, before I go, um, I want you to like, subscribe, because who doesn't want to look at this face? and hit the bell uh, so you get a notification of when I post again and I can't wait to see you guys next time we'll do some playing we'll learn some some music music one last thing I want to talk about before we go is how to store and care for your instrument so um, these are made out of wood um, actual wood people do craft these beautiful things and we have to take care of them so, you should have a case. I've never seen one just not have a case. Make sure that you put it in the case correctly. Um, never leave your instrument outside. Never leave it next to a heater or a cooler. You want to make sure it's in a room temperature, um, you know, a cool spot because um, it will crack and it will badly mess up your instrument and your sound post could fall. Remember, inside the F holes, I still don't get it. But um, make sure that we're keeping our instruments safe, uh, clean. If you have a rag, you can, all, not a rag, there's a cloth um, that a lot of them come with, instruments come with. 
clean your strings, clean under your tailpiece, um, under your bridge, you know, where rosin gets um, stuck, and, you know, just make sure you're not tossing, playing catch with your instrument, you know, or, dude, don't do that. Yeah, so have a great day, guys. Peace.